Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Coworker put a crown on and treated everyone over the top. Soon she was fired. The second story. Manager fired my son to cover for her cronies. I wrote a complaint to OSHA. Not one week later, this service was shut down. The third story. Coworker refuses to help during busy time, is forced to sort through her enormous mess alone at the end of the day. Today's first story is... Nanny vs. The Mom Boss From Hell MB is Mom Boss, DB is Dad Boss, NK is Nanny Kid, NF is Nanny Family. If you check my history, you all know I've been with this family for a few months. The house has no rules, no boundaries, and no respect. The kid's behavior is terrible. Yesterday, I walked into the room following two-year-old. Four-year-old comes out of nowhere and hits me and tries to run. A reaction, I know I shouldn't have because that was me not respecting his body, but I attempted to pick him up, and he jumped onto his bed and started crying. I said I'll wait here until you're ready to talk. I need to understand why you hit me, or something on those lines. I may not have had a kind voice, but I was lightweight peeved. I knew it was a matter of time till mom comes in. So sure enough, she comes in and tells me to leave. I try to say I think it's best we address it now, and she shouts at me to leave. So me and two-year-old leave. Four-year-old is never held accountable for his actions. MB then thinks it's a good idea to talk about it in front of the kids during breakfast. She, her tone, is making me feel like I'm being reprimanded. I'm completely overwhelmed. I'm looking around to fight back tears, and she screams at me for rolling my eyes. This is all so crazy. So at this point I start crying because I'm so frustrated. I'm shaking and crying. I ask for a mental health day because I felt like I needed a breather. She grabs two-year-old out of my hands and says don't come back. I smiled and said okay, bye, and as I'm gathering my stuff she's following me and saying things like I have a job, I have meetings, I can't just show up to work and in 41 minutes decide I need the rest of the day off blah blah blah. Long story short, I stay, I give myself a good 5 minute cry and then I carry on. Then she talks to me while the 2 year old is napping, 4 year old at school, she says things like I'm the best nanny they've ever had, she finally feels like she's found someone she can trust the kids with, but because I asked for a mental day, very reasonable I think that I'm unreliable and the trust is broken. Did I leave a kid in the car or something? What's happening? She told me yesterday she wants me to go home and reflect. Am I crazy? What am I reflecting on? I asked for the day off. You told me to leave. I said okay, you said no. I stayed. If anything, me staying shows you how reliable I am. Even while crying and shaking, I put that to the side and continued my day. Update 1. This morning I posted about my MB and everyone told me I needed to leave. I had every intention to. I started an email to send later today, but when I left for the day I get a text. MB. Unfortunately this is not going to work out. Envelope for you under front doormat. We're usually back home around 5.30. Me. Why didn't you just hand it to me? She let me go via text? Coward? I was with her all day, she didn't say a word to me. This is a blessing in disguise. Anyone know how I get my paid holidays and two weeks severance package I mowed? On our contract it says two weeks notice. Update. So I met up with MP. Not sure why I agreed to, but here I am. Refresher. Four-year-old ran up to me and hit me, then tried to push past me to run away, like he normally does. I put my arms to attempt to pick him up and prevent him from running away. He turns and runs to his bed and starts crying and calling for mom. She proceeds to tell me about how she showed the footage to her six best friends and it was split. Three people said I did nothing wrong. Three people says no or whatever. I got sick of this SH so I shut it down and asked to see the footage. She says, oh, it's too difficult for me to watch it. So we know two things. This footage and six friends don't exist. So I tell her if this happened again, I would do it again. If he hit me unprovoked and I needed to protect myself, I'll do what I need to. If he hit two-year-old and he was closer to me, to protect two-year-old, I would pick him up. If this happened in my preschool classroom and someone hit, I would pick up the closest child to prevent another from getting hurt. And she got quiet. I said, I get it. You wouldn't have done it. At this point, it's preference and difference in styles. Doesn't make it wrong, just makes it different. And she said, you're right, this is a preference. Then she says she thinks this relationship is salvageable. So I'm trying to keep this as clean as possible. So I say, yeah, I think so. But when you mention that you had to advocate and convince DB to keep me once two-year-old goes to school, it sounds like only one person sees value me. So I rather be with a family who wants and needs me, rather than just one person who advocated for me. She said she'll finalize the paperwork and will reach out next week. And that was it. I'm so done with this. Update 3. She's asked me to come back many times, has said this is salvageable. 
I kindly declined every time. Finally, we got to an understanding and I thought it would be over. She comes with some major BS. So she tells me that saying I resigned sounds better. At this point, I was like, whatever it takes to get me away from you. So she draws up this document for me to sign. I look at it and it's basically signing away my rights. I'm forever discharging them from any and all claims, demands, or liabilities that has occurred before this letter. Refrain from directly or indirectly making any defamatory statements to any person or entity, which would place them in a bad light or disparage their reputation and good name. To delete any photographs of any member of family on my personal device. To keep the terms of this letter confidential. I kindly text her. I don't want to drag this on longer than it already has. I read the documents you've sent over. I'm not obligated to sign them and I will not be signing them. I'm going to move on with my life and will no longer be replying. So she texts and calls. I don't answer or reply. Then she threatens to call my former NF to get me to respond. I just blocked her. Does anyone know if it's legal for former employers to contact references outside of the one-time call for a reference? I know employers can get references, but I think we as nannies should be able to get references on the family. She literally is insane. Final update. So after MB told me she was going to reach out to my former family, of 8 years, whom I love and hate to bother, because I didn't want to sign this 3-page document that's basically signing NDA and all my rights. I was so upset over that thread I blocked her. After a week I got an email from her forwarding my last pay stub, which I get emailed to me already. I didn't reply. Then a few days later while I was at work, I got a call from a number I recognized as her work phone, so I let it go to voicemail. She called twice back to back. She didn't leave a message so I went about my day. The next morning I turn on my iPad and she had called me twice on FaceTime voice. When I blocked her it didn't go through all my devices. So I went to my laptop to make sure it's blocked there. It wasn't. All her messages popped up. Eight of them including a voice one that deletes after two minutes. Text mentions stuff like, please consider your stonewall method. People are hurting. We all thought we would remain friends. In each other's lives blah blah blah. Just a bunch of crap. But one main thing was she said applied my daughter for a scholarship at her kid's school and we got accepted. A full year of school without paying for tuition. But I needed to respond that day because that was the deadline. What? I've never expressed tuition for my daughter's school and how much it sucks. I mean it does, but I've never said it. But how are you going to apply us for a scholarship to a school we do not attend, when you know nothing about my daughter other than her name? So first you didn't get a response after bringing up my previous MB. So now you're using my daughter to get me to respond. It's just so wild to me. But I'm done with that and working with a new family who I am so happy with. The second story is Revenge for firing my son Even though it's been a number of years, I'm going to be somewhat general in my post, just in case they read this. My son was working for a well-known gas station chain. He worked the night shift and constantly dealt with overdoses in the parking lot, bathrooms, etc. Most of these were friends or boyfriend and girlfriend of the workers and managers. Literally almost everyone that worked there was on prohibited substances, or some other type of prohibited substances. My son did inventory, and some ordering, and knew someone and or multiple people were stealing from the business. He reported it to his manager, who said they'd look into it. The next night he worked his normal shift and at the end the manager came in and asked to speak to him. She accused him of stealing and said she had it on camera. He asked what he stole and she refused to give him an answer and said that for legal reasons she couldn't tell him. He then asked to see the camera footage and was given the same answer. He came home visibly upset and scared. He thought they were going to call the police on him and he was also worried about having a termination for theft on his job history. He had just turned 18 and just graduated high school. I told him that she had nothing. Otherwise, she wouldn't have let him work all night by himself. That they didn't have any camera footage or she would have called the police. That more than likely she didn't want him snitching on her and her druggy friends. At these gas stations, they had a service that customers could use, in which the gas station made a huge part of their profits from. I've worked in a lot of factories and knew that the gas station did not have the appropriate safety signage nor training for this service. There was a lot of high voltage and frankly no one should have been operating this service without signage or training. I called OSHA and filed a report. Not one week later the service was shut down. Not only was that place shut down but the inspector went to every gas station this company owned in a 15 mile radius and shut every single one down and gave the company a huge fine for every infraction at every station. It didn't end there. OSHA showed up at their gas stations for years. More fines, more shutdowns. A few years later, the company ended up selling the service to a third-party contractor to get rid of the headache. The manager never filed a police report. There was never any camera footage. In fact, she was fired after the first OSHA inspection and they later found out she'd been stealing. The last story is... Don't want to help your coworkers during a busy time? Have fun sorting out your own mess. Six months ago, I worked part-time at a university retail store. 
as I was a grad student and had to make money somehow. Also note that I'm the only male retail associate working amongst 12 female retail associates. Almost all of them are nice, but there's this one girl who disliked me for some unknown reason. By default, I've treated my coworkers with courtesy, but that courtesy was never returned to me by this girl who we'll call B. During May, our university has a commencement ceremony for all graduates and the university retail store where I work is in charge of handling all graduating regalia. Since there were many boxes of regalia arriving at the store, my manager had an all-hands-on-deck because she needed all the help she got. So naturally, I'm there with some of my coworkers, making sure all the boxes are organized so we do not mix up all the graduation robe orders we receive from students. For the uninitiated, regalia is specific for bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. While bachelor and master's degree regalias are pretty simple, doctoral regalias are complex, as the tassels and hoods are specially color-coded, according to every doctoral candidate's major. While we're doing this, B decides not to help and chit-chat with a few of her friends who had walked in the store. Since we were pretty busy, I approached B and asked her if she could help us arrange all the boxes. She replied, I'm a little busy right now catching up with my friends. I'll come help you when I'm done. The way she said it was condescending and rubbed me the wrong way. I wanted to explode on her in front of her friends, but managed to keep my cool and walk back to the area and explained it to my coworkers that we shouldn't expect B's help yet. Coworkers started saying that B needs to act according to her wage as she's not a manager, but our coworker. And as we were getting back to work, a neat little idea popped into my head. Insert sly Grinch smile. Cue my petty revenge. Since most of my coworkers were helping with the boxes, I suggested that we should split up the boxes in batches so they can be easier to tackle. When they all agreed, most of my coworkers, including myself, assigned ourselves to sorting either the bachelor's or master's degree regalias. And you guessed it, I left sorting all the doctoral candidate regalia to be. As an icing on the FU cake, I got my manager's signature on the sorting list, making it official and proceeded to put it up on the employee pin board. When B strolls back to where we were working on the boxes, all coworkers inform her that she's working on the doctoral candidate's regalia boxes. Also due to the extra stuff inside these boxes, they're fragile and need to be handled carefully. Out of the corner of my eye, I see B trying to shepherd the box in its right place. She gets through with two boxes, and while she's trying to get three boxes in position at the same time, all three boxes split from the bottom, and all the regalia spills out on the floor. Now remember when I said doctoral regalia is complex, and every graduation robe is paired with their individual tassel and hood of specific color? It all gets mixed together and B is freaking out. When she asks us all to come help sort it out, I turn to her and I say in a calm voice, we'll come help you when we're done. Legend says that she's still trying to sort through all that regalia by herself. Hit the like button to support the channel and subscribe. Have a good day.